Bhutan is a small landlocked country in the eastern Himalayas. A mountainous country, Bhutan is characterized by high mountains and deep valleys. The land rises from an elevation of around 100 meters in the south to over 7,550 meters in the north. resulting in extreme variation in climate, geography, and biodiversity. With near pristine condition of nature and strong nature conservation policy, Bhutan holds the greatest potential for conservation of unique Eastern Himalayan ecosystem. In a world where the forest cover is disappearing at an alarming rate, Bhutan has a forest cover of 72%. The forest land with its associated natural resources represents a large and valuable pool of natural resources for the country. For centuries, the people of Bhutan have preserved their natural resources and lived in harmony with nature. The relationship between the Bhutanese people and the environment has been forged over centuries with moral, cultural and ecological boundaries. Respect for these boundaries was ensured through a set of formal and informal rules and norms. Traditional and local beliefs promoted conservation of the environment as key ecological areas were recognized as a bodies of gods, goddesses, protective deities and underworld spirits. Well, Bhutan is largely an aggregate country with 80% of the population depending for their livelihood on small-scale mountain agriculture and livestock farming. Use of natural resources, especially forest resources, remains an essential component in the most people's livelihood and culture. The demands for high-utility natural resources products, such as timber, firewood, pasture, and important non-timber forest products at the local level, resulted in the establishment of locally defined roles and rules to regulate access to and use of our natural resources. Such systems and boundaries within a community and between communities help in resolving conflicts over resource use. In other situations, competition for resources was regulated through temporal arrangements. This indigenous community labor responses resulted from a combination of appreciation for the value of the natural resources and the recognition of the need to prevent overuse. Accordingly, a concept on the management of natural resources was developed and a research directive was issued to take up community-based natural resources management as a priority research activity. Since then, research applications were implemented in virus communities and resources with priority targets like mushroom, cane, and forestry. Over the past years, the government initiated the production of mushroom within the backyard to ensure a steady source of income for the farmers. Some common mushroom grown within the backyard are oyster and shiitake. Around 300 households engage in this activity, attributing to around 3 to 4 tons of fresh mushrooms in the local market. However, recently, demand for a particular variety of wild mushroom known as masutake has been on the rise from outside countries, in particular Japan. Therefore, to facilitate the export and the sustenance of this particular variety of wild mushrooms, the government has put in place a community-based mushroom management framework.
We are looking at Kingeka, a village which is located around 20 kilometers away from Thimphu, the capital city of Bhutan. The village is situated at 2,867 meters above sea level. The vegetation consists of pine, juniper and oak. And the humidity is ideal for the growth of Matsutake. The villagers are mostly agriculture and livestock farmers who depend mostly on their own farm produce for daily subsistence. However, over a decade now, the farmers have been supplementing their cash income from the sale of Masutaki mushroom, which is collected from the forest surrounding their village. According to the Natural Resources Management Framework, the community is held responsible for ensuring that minimal damage is caused to the forest. Under this, the right of collection of natural resources from the forest is reserved to the local community and the community also ensures that outsiders do not enter into their forest for collection of any natural resources. <laughs> Thus over the years, the people have been able to maintain their forest nearly pristine and undisturbed. This is now the season for Masutake and an opportunity for the farmers to make extra money for their families. The season starts from around June to August. This is a very important season for the farmers of the community as each family will have to try to collect as much mushroom as possible. Therefore, during this period, most of the villagers choose to leave their homes and camp near the forest. They construct makeshift tents of plastic for shelter and sleep and eat here as well. As the saying goes, the early bird catches the worm. This is particularly so when it comes to hunting for the very well hidden Masutake. Every individual starts combing the forest floor with keen eyes in the hope of finding a well-sized mushroom. The farmers are also advised not to cause destruction to the forest, which the farmers are aware is for their own benefit. According to the specific recommend by the Agriculture Ministry, the farmers are not allowed to pick mushrooms under 8 cm as they will not fetch good prices in the export market. In case they come across any undersized mushroom, they cover it well so that other hunters will not be able to spot it. They search the forest the whole day and at dark return to their respective camps with their treasures of mushrooms. If one is lucky, one collects around 7 kg and well, if luck is not in favor, they also return with barely a piece or two. <laughs> Thank you.
Once back at the camp, they cook their meals over a campfire and generally masutake is one of the ingredients. They either roast it over the fire or cook it with cheese and other vegetables. After a good night rest, early the next morning, the luckier individuals head towards the makeshift auction yard and the not so lucky individuals resume their hunt again. According to the specific recommend by the agriculture ministry, the farmers are not allowed to pick mushrooms under 8 cm as they will not fetch good prices in the export market. At the auction yard, business takes place under the strict vigilance of the government officials from the Department of Forest. The auction price is determined by the community based on the quality of the mushrooms. Generally, the mushroom is graded into two categories. The price for the mushroom varies from season to season. This particular year, a kilo of the best mushroom fetches around 25 US dollars. The buyers are local vendors or brokers from the capital city. The vendors transport the good to Thimphu where they contact the exporters. Once the mushroom reaches the export place, they are again graded under the supervision of the officials from the Bhutan Military Authority. Proper grading and packaging is a requirement for export of mushrooms to ensure that the Bhutanese mushrooms meet the international export standards before the mushrooms are exported to their Throughout the season, people move in and out of the forest with expectations for good luck. The concerned government officials are also visible throughout the season, either monitoring or advising the farmers on harvesting and marketing techniques. This is Mr. Tashitrin, a forestry official who is on duty during the mushroom season. According to him, the Department of Forestry is constantly backstopping and monitoring the management of the forest. <laughs> Shamu 
The team from the National Mushroom Center is also constantly and the harvest of the mushroom within the forest during the season. They also provide technical assistance to the farmers as and when required by them. Agency is the Agriculture Marketing Department who assists in identifying export markets and guides in local price determination. With the involvement of all relevant government and private bodies, the people of the Kimika village is guided smoothly in concluding yet another year of sustainable harvest. The tax is rough and the farmers have to endure a lot of problems. It is not an easy task hunting for the mushroom. In fact, it is like hunting for the needles in a haystack. At times, the weather conditions play. Usually, slight rain is most welcome as it accelerates the growth of the mushroom. But the factor that concerns most is the deterioration of the forest and the diminishing yield of the mushroom. The question is simple, but the answer is perplexing. The people do not know why. According to many farmers, they think it is because of the increase in the number of the harvesters. <laughs> For the farmers of Kingeka, each farmer of this village is a happy farmer at the end of the season as they are able to afford the little extra luxury of buying new clothes for their children, new utensils for their kitchen and at times new roof for their house. <laughs>